Hey there kids, welcome to another math lesson for fifth grade, module six, lesson 19. This is for homework. Uh, sometimes these are a little bit tough for kids, so these videos are designed to help you check your work after giving it uh, your best shot. So the objective is at the bottom of the page, plot data on line graphs and analyze trends. And so you should be able to do this on your own after working on lesson 19 problem set. So I love these lessons with the graphs and really practical questions. They're so relevant to real life. So uh, this is something that you might see in your checking account if you are earning money and spending money. So let's get into it and then you can check your work. The line graph below tracks the balance of Howard's checking account at the end of each day between May 12th and May 26th. So you've got your title, you've got your dollars. This is going to be the money in thousands. Very important. He doesn't just have a dollar, a dollar fifty and two dollars. It's one for one thousand dollars. That's going to be important for you to note because it makes a difference when you're trying to do the calculations all in the middle. Use the information in the graph to answer the questions that follow. Um, usually on the bottom they will put time, whether it's the time of day or a time of year. Time is always moving forward, so it really makes sense to have time on the bottom of a graph. So about how much money does Howard have in his checking account on May 21st? So what do you want to do? You want to look at this because it's a number line and you need to figure out each line that intersects the x-axis, which we can still talk about these axes in terms of x and y. Each line that intersects represents a day. You want to confirm that and make sure bet by counting between 12 and 19. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yes, it's confirmed. Each one represents a day. Now these are all May, so I'm not going to bother putting a 5 because they're all 5. 5, 12, 5, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It just helps you make sure you're on the right day. Make sure you're on the right day. Many of these questions are asking you to uh, on a certain day or between which days and you want to not be guessing fifth graders have a tough time with just a bunch of blank lines in between given data okay so about how much money does he have in his checking account on May 21st find this line and go up to this intersection and how nice that our first question actually has uh, a point on a line where I could say hey I have a value right here now, the only problem is that if you're counting by a certain amount and it's not given and we have thousands, then what would be the value of this? If the halfway point between 1,000 and 2,000 has 500 more, you could say, okay, that's 1,500. What's in between 1,000 and 1,500? And we're not, it's not one. 1100 it's not you know counting by 100s it's going to be half of 500 so 1250 for that value so that's that's the first part and then if it's 250 for the half of 500 what would be the halfway above that well it would be another 250 but on top of the 500 so there is the value or all the values between a thousand and two thousand so that can help you because we do have to have this answer here for a about how much money does Howard have he has about one thousand two hundred fifty dollars and um, so then moving on to B if Howard spends two hundred fifty from his checking account on May 26th, okay, that's the last day here, about how much money will he have left in his account? So, well, how much does he have here? That's important to know. So you're going to say, all right, this is roughly right in the middle of these two. So you go all the way back and you say it's about halfway between 1,000 and 1,250. 
So what's half of 250? So that would be about 1,125. Now that's our starting point, okay? So that's about 1,125. And then he spends 250, and again, the vocabulary is spending or money leaving, which would be subtraction. And now you can do your uh, standard algorithm, five minus zero. Two minus five you can't do, but if you go here and take one and give 10, you can do that. And then of course, uh, you can't take two, so you go here, take one, give 10. And that leaves you with 875. So about $875 left. Remember that word problems should have word answers. For C, move the book up. Explain what happened with Howard's money between May 21st and the 23rd. Let's take a look at this. May 21st and 23rd. So go up here and look at the graph and there's no spike and there's no drop. So it's flat, it's a flat graph. On previous graphs we've talked about what happens when the graph goes flat and there's no change. No change because he didn't spend anything but he didn't earn anything either. So he neither spent nor neither nor earned any money. And so you want to make note that when it's flat, there is no change. Just like on the other one with the tomatoes, no growth. But um, for spending, nothing went down. So Howard received a payment. He got money from his job that went directly into his checking account. On which day did this most likely occur? Explain how you know. So if money goes into the account, then the number, the value of your account goes up. So the day when it goes up is most likely May 16th. May 16th, you have to explain, has a uh, large spike. It has a large increase. It's whatever you want to say or how in your kid language makes you feel comfortable. It goes way up. So it has an increase. Um, and so this is the day. So this is the start of the opening of the business day right here. And then this is the close of the business day. So this is all the 16th. Okay, all this information belongs to what happens on the 16th. Remember, time is moving forward. So May 16th has an increase. Uh, so I know money went in or into the account. Okay, so justify it with your explanation. Finally here, Howard bought a new television. He bought, that means he's spending it, it's subtraction. During the time shown in the graph, on which day did this most likely occur? Explain how you know. So if there's little spending, 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 this might be, you know, going to the grocery store, going to Target, going to, you know, pick up a few things, buying somebody's birthday present. But when you have a huge drop, that's a big expense. So which day is this? Then you go down here and you say, okay, on May 18th. 18th. There was a large drop in the value of his account. Okay, and that is the money is going down. Big expense if he had almost $2,000 in it and he ends up with only a little bit more than $1,200, maybe $1,300, that's a big expense or payment that goes out that day. Okay, so on May 18th, there was a large drop in the value of his account. So that's the day and that's your reasoning. All right, next page and click subscribe.
while we're sitting here doing nothing, click subscribe. You know you want to. Uh, hopefully these videos are helping you out with your math. All right, so the line graph below tracks Santino's time at the beginning and end of each part of a triathlon. Tri meaning three activities where you are uh, a sports fanatic and usually it is a swim, bike, run. Use the information in the graph to answer the questions that follow. Noticing that again, the time is running along the bottom of the graph because time always marches forward. And this is very important to note. This is distance from the finish line in kilometers. So being farthest away from the finish line and just starting the race, moving toward the finish line is the down. Moving toward the finish line and taking up time, okay? So how long does it take Santino to finish the triathlon? From beginning to end, how long? Now this is a number line, so what are you counting by? If this is one o'clock and this is two o'clock, if this is the halfway point and you say, okay, well I got 1.30, what are the, the chunks of time that you have two of in between the when the hands are at the top or the big hand is on the top and the big hand is on the bottom. You've got 10 minute intervals. So hopefully you can tell time. I know that's been kind of a sticky issue for a lot of fifth graders. 110, 120, these are 10 minute increments. 140, 150, you can mark times. You might need to make reference here to 10, to 20. And what time would this be? 10 minutes before that to 50. All right, so how long does it take them to finish? So you, I've seen kids count in so many different ways. Here's an hour, okay? This last chunk, not an hour. It stops right there, so you can add them together. You can just count forward. Uh, it's an hour and 50 minutes. It's really pretty straightforward. Starting at one, here's the hour, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. One hour plus 50. Okay, it doesn't have to have an explanation, so you can write your answer or check your answer and move on. To complete the triathlon, Santino first swims across the lake. Swim, swim, swim. Then bikes through the city. Bike, bike, bike. And finishes by running around the lake. <laughs> running around. According to the graph, what was the distance of the running portion of the race? So according to the graph, now remember, distance is on the side. Distance is over here. So what are we counting by on this number line? This is time. This is not time. This is kilometers. Okay, hopefully you know half of 10 is 5. Halfway. Halfway. So right here, this dot makes 5K the length of between the running start of the race and the finish of the race. So 5K the running part is 5k, 5km. During the race, Santino pauses to put on his biking shoes and helmet and then later to change into his running shoes. At what times, at what times did this most likely occur? And then explain how you know. All right, so if he's moving toward the finish line, then the line goes down. Okay, so he swims, swims, swimming. Right here. That is when he's getting out of the swim clothes and into the bike shoes and helmet. Okay, bike, 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 bike. Er, pull up, get out, or get off your bike. Got to put on your running shoes because running shoes are different than biking shoes. And so this and this, what times? The times are on the bottom. Draw a connecting line or at least try to figure out what is then in between 110 and 120? At 115, he likely changed the first time. And, and this one, it doesn't appear to be exactly in the middle. If you really wanted to be precise, you could say instead of 215, you could say 214. But 115 and 214 or 15 if you want because it's almost in the middle. 
uh, he likely changed gear. Now you want us to explain because that's not your complete answer right here. Those are just the times because the um, progress, okay, remember if he's making progress towards the finish line, it goes down. He's not progressing towards the finish line, not progressing because the progress toward the finish is flat okay the line is flat and that's the giveaway if the line is flat he is not moving toward moving toward the finish line which is at zero okay very important um, and then you could even say something about that would show on the y-axis which part of the race does Santino finish most quickly and how do you know all right so we're talking about uh, time passing and um, so the shortest amount of time that passes and where is time passing, it's along the bottom, okay? So the part of the race, if even if you uh, put a time with each event, okay? So the time it takes is from 1 o'clock until 1.15, 15 minutes swimming. This one, he starts even if you round to 1.20, okay? Okay. We've got 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, that's out. He's spending a lot of time on the bike. Then if you go over here to the running portion, from 220 to 30 to 40, he's already past that. So you come back here and you want to say, he finished the swim fastest because... It only took about 15 minutes. Now, if you want to say, according to the graph, it's the shortest section of time on the graph. Okay, it's the shortest section of time. And that's the x-axis on the graph. Okay, and finally, last one. During which part of the triathlon is Santino racing most quickly? When is he going fastest? Explain how you know. So when you look at, okay, he's covering some distance, but not very much, and it took him a little while. So I would say the swim is the slowest. But the graph really drops off. So he's covering a lot of kilometers. And, you know, if you just think logically about it, if you're on a bike, you're really covering more ground. Yay, there go the lights. I feel like I'm back, baby. Um, just like every other day. So if the graph is really dropping so quickly, then uh, he's covering a lot of kilometers quickly. As you would if you were on a bike, you can go a whole lot faster on a bike than you can on your feet. And you can go a whole lot faster on a bike than you can in the pool. So uh, the fastest portion, or the part where he's racing most quickly, and tied with the graph, is the bike portion. Is fastest because it is. It has the steepest line. Okay, so it's all about that, the steep covering a lot of kilometers very quickly. Okay, um, so there you go. That is lesson 19 for you, and I hope it was helpful. Come back again. We'll see you on another video. Goodbye for now.